The Building and Facilities Construction Committee meeting Wednesday, November 16th, 2022 at 4 p.m. will now come to order. And just go around the uh, and introduce yourself. Linda Brown. Recorder. Ramy Klotz. Fred Fontaine. Bob Warming. Shirley Masinski and Town Administrator Matt, Matt Wojcik. Thank you everybody for coming. So the first item on our agenda is uh, the Board of Selectmen assignment, the needs assessment and feasibility considerations supporting options for public safety and our highway department building projects. And it was on the agenda for the Board of Selectmen and I did go and um, reported to the board um, our, our uh, recommendation and thoughts and Matt, if you'd like to fill in what's transpiring now and they did vote for it to move ahead. Right, they, Madam Chair, they voted a broader mandate than was recommended by your committee. Yep. So <clears throat> they directed me to formulate an RFQ for all three building locations, but not a single building location. So in other words, look into what could, should, would have needed to be done at the fire station, what needs to be done here to upgrade this building. Um, <clears throat> my approach to that is gonna be to formulate an RFQ for a quote unquote house doctor. So we'll have one relationship with an architectural firm or an engineering firm and we will pick off the projects in order of their priority or their accessibility uh, without having to go out three times for three different RFQs. Actually really want that design professional to become very familiar with all the moving parts of our organization rather than having to break in somebody new or, I hate to say it this way, but go through the motions of having three RFQs when we pretty much know who we want to work with, we'll just do one. And <clears throat> I've drafted the beginning, the front end of this, where the emphasis is on the highway barn. Time is of the essence. You know, we are paying, it's a very modest rental, by the way, mm -hmm. on that trailer, but the trailer is there, right? So mm -hmm. it's front of, line of sight for the taxpayer to see that it's there. So we want to move along quickly, and I thought, Madam Chair, if you'll indulge me, I'll, sure. the process I think I want to use in the upfront part, the feasibility part, yeah is to work with the consultant to um, to have them render a professional opinion or recommendation on which parcel and land of land in town would be the highest and best possibility for a highway department. Um, rather than put ourselves in the position of picking without that level of detail and depth. So that feasibility study should be done, you know, over the winter mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully the select board will pick a location and then the design professional would go to conceptual design, which is basically just building elevations and location within the building envelope on the target parcel. So when we go to town meeting and ask for funds, probably borrowing, we would have that level of detail available and there would be enough information to be able to answer taxpayer questions at town meeting at that time. So. This first go around, we really wanted to look at the three properties around town that the town already owns or owns a big piece of it already so that the additional homework, if you will, the rigmarole of, of having to negotiate with private parties and, and all of that could be sidestepped or partially sidestepped and we would have the most flexibility to move. Every site in town has ups and downs and what I would like this committee's advice on is of, of the three we already have, are we missing any that you think we should put in the RFQ? Or of the three that we've identified, since you represent the voters of the town in your current roles, I mean, is there one that you're just like, that? we would never vote for that, Tell me, we would never go along with that, because that's helpful guidance for me to either just take it out, okay? So we'll go through all three. I try not to look at myself in the camera because <laughs> I, I just keep remembering my 400 meter days. I didn't look like this back then. <laughs> so the first site we went out and walked to see a new town. 
is uh, the existing highway barn on Main. Mm -hmm. And that is that parcel that you see marked C. Right here. And you'll notice how it stretches in the back and there's our salt barn. Now that's actually a storage barn. The salt barn's over here. And some thought was given to some of these landowners may have an interest in selling. And whether or not they sell, there would be some disposition of this easement. So this is actually a, a right to pass and repass over the town property. So we all went out there and we saw that. This property here actually owns this driveway all the way out to right now. So if you squared off this piece here, you would actually have more than one way to get out onto two different roads going two different directions. Uh, and also to route your traffic around for loading and unloading. This landowner expressed through email a uh, thought process about possibly selling. We don't know the status of this one, although this is a small business. Uh, <clears throat> we're not really thinking about these pieces up here. These are buildings controlled by GBI and related businesses. Mm -hmm. they're just they're Obviously, they're in the picture. So what is involved here, this blue line is the offset from the, from the body of water that you see. So none of this is really available to be developed because it's within 200 feet of the pond. So your real building space would be anything that's not in that blue buffer zone. But you can see that if we had some of these pieces here, we would have more room than we have now to spread out the operation and build new. So that's one, possibility number one. The appeal, obviously, is that it is in the same location, it is in the center of town. To the extent that we manage stormwater and salts and other things, we're managing it already on this site. So in terms of our conversations with DEP, we're in a better spot, safer spot. We're not going out to, to raw land and developing it. We've already, whatever we've done to this, we've done to it already. <laughs> so that's one, let's call that. The downside, obviously, is we would have to go through the process of procurement under Chapter 30B, Section 16, to acquire parcels, which is time consuming. But that's just a single parcel, correct? So I don't know. Um, so we would actually be polling these owners to see who would be willing mm. to sell okay. and how it would work out. And I need to shrink this to get back to where I was. This parcel, for those who recognize it, is the Buckeye Pipeline. This is a piece of property purchased by the town of Douglas jointly with the Water Commission. Mm -hmm. So funds from both the Enterprise Fund and the General Fund were used to purchase this property. <clears throat> this is also on Main. So the other picture that you were looking at, you could see the landfill was off on the right-hand side of the photo. Now it's on the left-hand side of the mm -hmm. photo, so you're talking just couple of lots down. There are neighbors, so you'll note these smaller lots are residential development up against this piece. This was a petroleum pipeline at one time. And that is the easement, so this red bounded area. Pretty much impossible to do anything in that area. We can cross and recross, but we we're not supposed to be digging in there. I went back there with um, who did I drag back there? I think it was Matt Benoit. They came out of there, right? <laughs> we came out of it. I was wearing blaze, right? Lots and lots of orange. This is really wet, piece. Mm -hmm. So while these blue lines are actually the location of the stream, and in New England we call them a, a brook. Mm -hmm. These are brooks about as wide as this conference room table and fairly deep. But then it spreads out. So you really can't see it so well. But this vegetation here is a change. So this is a different, this is a wetlands complex mm -hmm. in here where the water spreads out and then comes back as the water runs off. 
So most of this back here really isn't usable. The appeal, though, is this is higher. So you can see the topography here, right? Mm -hmm. This is the grain going up. So this is 472. This is 462. So every line here is 10 feet. And the grade is the highest right up here. And high over here. And the lowest in the back here. This existing building was the small office building and there were controls for the pumps for the petroleum. So there is a whopper of a three-phase power connection and transformer that is already wired to the site. It is just off the edge of the building and there's no load on it right now. So if you go over there, you can hear that really loud hum. Right, so it's all this power going to it. Um, some of the smaller buildings still have small cranes in them that we could probably salvage. What's nice about this is even though these neighbors are close, there isn't anybody else to the rear. So we could be thoughtful about how we engineer protection for there, for the sound, and then we wouldn't have to worry about too much in the back. The real downside here is that this is in the aquifer protection zone, and our wells are not terribly far away, <clears throat> and it was purchased explicitly for the purpose of safeguarding your water supply. So there would probably be some extensive engineering around managing stormwater and other, uh, just the digging itself on this site if it were to be used. It is very sandy, it is full of really high grade sand and gravel. So <clears throat> uh, the one thing about the soil is extremely permeable. That's, a, that's both a good and a bad, right? Um, no town sewer this far. Town water runs by it, but there's no town sewer up this far. Same with the other, there's no town sewer up. But there is <coughs> so that's site number two. Can I ask a question on that way? Sure. What's Where's the entrance? Just that one little sliver between the two houses there? Yeah, so this lot has this existing driveway. So if you drive by it now, you will see this driveway right after, I think that's Colonero. And then this little square, tiny little square, I'm standing in the way of the camera. This tiny little square is actually a, a pump house for the water department. Mm -hmm. Pretty significant set of pumps in that building in here. And this driveway splits. This building over here is a garage. That's where they stored their pipe. So the water department, the Douglas Water Department is occupying that. There's hand cranes in there, so they're able to pick up hydrants and valves and store them, and there's pipe racks out back. So we're using this for pipe storage and some prep work. And this is fully abandoned. Much to my chagrin, the roof is let go in one corner. So we really couldn't even use it for office space, for highway, we thought about it, but it's just too moldy and too, too far gone. So all those spaces, that, those buildings are just accessible from that one sliver? One, one sliver. But that a lot, if you look at the boundaries, it does have frontage on Rydell in the back. But on the other side of the brook? Way on the other side. Yeah. With houses, you'd have to go between houses to... Up here? No, well, you could go through the woods, but... Just have to build the road over the brook, and that's... Yeah. And you see the grade, these lines are pretty tight. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's not just the brook, it's all swamp. There's one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's too late in the year to find skunk cabbage, but I'm sure it's out there in the spring. Yeah. <laughs> so, Thanks. what's the um, size of the usable portion? How many acres do you think compared to where the highway department and that? Yeah, it's hard to show you the scale, right? So, okay. to answer your question, that Buckeye property is much bigger. Much bigger. Than the first one we looked at. Okay. So that entire front piece that we said might be usable because it's all high mm -hmm. is about the same size as the lots we have colored in on the first photograph. Is the current highway barn in the aquifer too? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. So that's really. So th that's really about taking the correct yeah. precautions. Not necessarily, it doesn't really rule them out. What does rule them out are these 400 foot circles around the actual wells themselves. That is untouchable. <clears throat> so this piece is the highway department's 
for lack of a better word, stomping grounds. Shall we call it that? Um, Dumping grounds? It's, it's, it's Buff's, Buff haunts this place, right? Now, where where is this? Which Back of the little no, school? You know, I didn't really know. Which location are we looking at right now? So yeah. That's what I'm going to explain. Oh, all right. So your, the old uh, Ellen School yeah. slash oh, Ellen okay. Falls right here. Yeah. And the Douglas Axman soccer field right. is back here. The town owns this lot, that little brown house. We talk about tearing it down every year, and then we don't. This is a driveway with an existing crossing over the stream that connects this pond to this body of water over here that actually goes right through there. Uh, I'm sorry, there is, there's the existing crossing. <coughs> um, Buff built the bridge by taking two blocks of concrete and putting a concrete slab over the top of it and driving cars over it. It would need to be widened, it's mm -hmm. only one car wide. So when you come back here, this map is actually pretty accurate because it shows you the change. So this was a pretty high rise, and Buff basically mined it all out and used the sand and gravel from this location for the streets in the winter for sand. Then over the years, the highway department has been putting clean fill back into it. So at one time, and this is no longer true, but at one time some of the catch basin cleanings and tailings from uh, street sweeping were being put in there. On my watch, we removed all of it, and it all tested and hauled away, so it's all been properly disposed of. So what's in here now is mostly stumps, where we cut trees down, uh, and they're in the street, or they're in the way. A lot of times they get dumped up here. We've had a tub grinder that comes up every year. We grind everything down to mulch. There's a couple of really big mulch piles. And to the extent that sand and gravel were piled up, it's been spread out. So you can see there's a uh, is a good, in some places it's four feet high, and another place I slid down was a good eight feet high <laughs> of where it was, where the grade has been made flat so that they can operate up there. Uh, but this is a fairly substantial area with a, a high spot back here. You can see that there's a, again, there's a vegetation change. These are all really tall pine trees, because this is all sand and gravel, and there's the uh, Joyce of solar field. The, town has an interest in. It's where we get our solar credits. The tough difficulty with this site is while it is big enough, the building envelope is kind of like a V shape because everything in the red is the off, the red line. So that the right is uh, negative brownie points for changing colors on me. But <laughs> these, are, these are the wetlands buffer zones. Mm -hmm. So you can't build on that side of the red. Blue is an actual stream. And this lake blue is that is standing water. This little pond is at about eight feet deep. Mm -hmm. So if you came back through this driveway, you can build it here. And over here, and you have to avoid the wellhead protection zone, and you have this up here. So it kind of wraps around in almost like a semicircle. There's electricity up to this little field house. So there is some utility connection, we only have to close the distance. But those red, those yellow circles are the untouchable cannot go there. But that overall area is considerably larger than where we, where they currently stand. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Does this area also contain wetlands? I know the red is buffer zone, but are there any wetlands so besides? These green are the ones that we know are wetlands. Oh, okay. So when you cross over this little bridge, you look on either side, it's you and the muskrats. Mm -hmm. right? It's all cat and nine tails, and mm -hmm. probably a couple of feet deep with a couple of feet of mud under it. But then it rises pretty quickly as you go up the driveway, and this is a, this is a good deal higher than this. So when you're at the top of this pile, looking down at the pond, you're you're really looking down a pretty significant area. But then your worry is to run off. You have to manage the runoff. Yeah. So once again, it's the only entrance to this site, right past the soccer field. Yeah. So you, we could be as wide as we needed to be here, because this house it does have to be demolished. So we, the town owns all of this and all of this. And what about in the the, the this bottom? Is, this is actually a lot to the house here. Mm -hmm. 
So this is a lot. What about in the bottom right corner? Over here. Yeah, that's it. There's that little go a little bit left. You hand move your hand a little so left. Oh yeah. There's that little spot right there. Yeah. Is that to a road? Yeah, so this is really narrow. Oh, okay. Yes, this is a road. Okay. Well, that's a set. Sub that's what I was saying. Is that another, is that, what, could that possibly be another entrance? But. Yeah, I can't. That's U Street, isn't it? No. No, this is, these are cul-de-sacs. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And this is a cul-de-sac, so this is the entrance to Southeast Maine. So what does that offer Southeast Maine? Oh, my goodness. Can't think of it. <laughs> I was there when they built it. <laughs> oh, I, live, I live across the street. You'd think I would know. Um, <laughs> I know what you're talking about. And then that goes... Rafferty that built that. <laughs> so this was all the Rafferty piece. Yeah. This was the deal he swung himself, right? He got a lot of money for this. And this is one of the things that we'll have to talk about on go forward basis. Let's sit because I have some pictures for you. Uh, of all the parcels the town has bought, this was super expensive. And not only did he get the deal on the land itself, but he part of his deal was that the town would run water around the edge hmm. so he could develop all those lots on that roadway that you see, right? So the town really anteed up big. So John was saying he thought it was close to $8 million. I don't know if you remember. I don't. I, I know I wasn't. But that dwarfs what we spent. So for Buckeye, for the pipeline, that was $400,000. Wow. Okay. So this is way more expensive piece of property for the town. And the thought that John had was that Buck really wanted this because he didn't have to buy sand. He didn't have to haul it anywhere. He was just going to haul out of it, just dig it out of here and just spread it. So it made his operation that much easier. That's a lot of money to pay for some sand. <laughs> 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 I think of how much, how much $8 million of sand looks like. <laughs> but uh, anyway, It had to have been approved by town meeting at some point. Yeah. And Buff was still alive, so it wasn't that long ago. Right. So, but the town owns that land? We own it outright. And that was, best of our knowledge, there's no claims or easements or anything on it. So those are the three candidates right now. Hmm. Um, Chair, I guess I'll kick it back to you for a second if you want to get any feedback from No, I just have a question sure. where the... Um, elementary school is, what is the status of that school at this point? Is it being used by the veterans or? No, so the veterans have moved um, most of their most important mm -hmm. items to this adult social center. Okay. And um, Patrice lets them store some items in the back. Mm -hmm. When you go in the building now, it's the roof is still has good integrity, so there hasn't been any ceiling damage or water damage from the roof. It's an old, well, I guess at one time it was the poor farm. Am I correct? I I have never heard that. I don't that. remember. Uh, the poor farm is. I remember when it was a school. Yeah. That's and my my kids went there. And my husband went there. My brother went there. Yeah. So there was there's Two some schoolhouse. document that in, there was a poor farm somewhere in that area of town. South Street. South Street. No, owned, that building is still there, right? It's owned by Shirley Downs. It's the yeah. Downs farm. Um, so its highest and best use for the longest time was the grammar was a grammar school, mm -hmm. correct? Two so it's still a, a two room. Yeah. And then there's. When you when you walk up the stairway, yeah. there's a little kitchen, and then there's a kind of a bigger hall. It's where the veterans used to meet because mm -hmm. it was a fairly substantial hall. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I think it's kind of a shame because you, you can kind of sense the history when you're in there. Mm -hmm. Like the people really occupied it and used the space. The problem we have with it is that it has a fieldstone foundation, and so under modern code, getting that building fully structurally sound as that foundation has started to crumble a bit. It's a pretty big undertaking. Um, to save a building that is actually very old and mm -hmm. you know it has uh, some damage from the sides and the scrappers got everything 
Mm -hmm. That was worth anything. They took it all out. There's no pipes or anything. Else. Well, there's not enough room where that building sits now, anyway. So it really comes right to the edge of. So that where that school sits, if when you drive by, try not to get distracted when you're driving. The <laughs> police chief isn't going to ring me up for this, but if you have a chance to look over the side, you'll notice that the the mowed grass goes right up to the edge of the wetland that's right behind yeah. you. Mm -hmm. So practical matter is really not even enough room there for a septic. So when the soccer club has been active about asking about better use of this site, <clears throat> they've been pitching the notion of pitching, get it, <laughs> um, uh, putting some small kitty fields up front and making, utilizing that space and then keeping the field they have in the back. That last site, to make it work, we would have to swing a deal with our school department to move the soccer field to a different location. Wow. Uh, so that it would be more accessible and have parking. Because it'd just be too dangerous trying to mm -hmm. share space with young children in, uh, in our highway barn. So <clears throat> that would be it. That's another consideration mm -hmm. there. So there are no silver bullets. There are no easy answers. And that's why I would rather have a design professional right. work it yeah. all up and say this is the building you need and when we try to put that footprint into these different pieces of property it fits better over here than any other place. I'm, I'm hoping that's how it will come out. All of these parcels though, you know, in the grand scheme of things, there are many, many acres. So even if you say most of it you can't touch because of wetlands, you still have a buildable site that's part of it. Okay. So, are there any other suggestions of where we should? Well, I have a question. So, Linda, you're, uh, you're doing the study for a uh, for all three departments, correct? You'd be sending it to a design engineering firm to look for the best spot for the big build. Well, <laughs> if I if I understand the select board correctly, what they're looking for is not a, a wide open ended question. It's more of what do we need to do to the fire station to make the fire station work for okay. the fire department's mm -hmm. needs? What needs to happen to the municipal center for town hall and police? That's the focus of that and not looking at the broader mandate that we started off with when we first started this conversation. But highway would be a, a definitely uh, a separate building. A That's completely what, discrete okay, building yeah. at this point in this yeah. right. conversation. Because yeah. I know that some of the access like to the soccer field, that's a narrow road because that would never accommodate no. three departments. But it's looking at a single engineering firm to do all three. Is that, yeah. Okay. That's, I think that's, it's not combining all three, it's. Right. Well, okay. one, uh, if I may, um, one of the things that the um, Board of Selectmen members, some of them didn't want to have happen is that although the highway department is the most in need, this is my interpretation. Let's not forget the needs of the police department, the fire department, because later if we have to, you know, a board has to come back and they say, wow, you didn't tell us that when you were going through the needs for the uh, highway department. And there are some needs, which I did bring up, which, you know, you all pointed out. It basically space, um, but also fire department. We saw some of the needs that were safety needs and uh, air quality, but some some projects are being done there. And so what's needed is to wait to s also to see how much is being done and continues to be done to make it you know a, a quality building. And there is room, I believe, for them to have some expansion if needed. The talking strictly fire, Madam Chair? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the fire, the fire department has room to, to grow there. Yeah. And if, so, so part of me feels like we're playing this, um, almost like a game of Jenga, because there are so many conditions precedent to all of our decision making, that at some point somebody has to pull that last stick so that the rest of the decisions will fall in place. If the select board chooses the water project and wastewater project to, to upgrade the water main and extend wastewater, 
past the highway barn to that basically that to the old veterans mm -hmm. home that would mean that you do not need to have septic or a well well you don't need a well now but you don't need to have septic on the fire department property so you would be able to to occupy almost all the space the, mm -hmm. the town doesn't have a coverage limit for lots but <clears throat> That septic system there is is in a pretty precarious spot, and it would be nice to get rid of it because it was kind of a, a last-minute thing, and some of the pipe is actually under the slab for the building. It may not be pitched perfectly. <laughs> we can make things work, but it's not pitched perfectly. But then you just have to. You can't obviously you can't build on that part of the lot where the commercial size field is so I have another question yes, about Linda. the um, aquifer area um, can you not I think it's like 50% of a lot you can't hard top I think that's right is that mm -hmm. correct there, so well, I put it this way madam chair there is mm -hmm. a percentage mm -hmm. Right? There's okay. definitely something that you can't exceed in the, uh, I don't want to be I held. I don't remember the exact number. But I, think it, I know that you're right, that there is a limit yeah. to how much can be hard top. Because yeah. then, you know, the fire department may only be able to build so much. Right. Because they've already hard topped an area in the building. Same with the highway. If they were to stay where they are, but we were to purchase a, another lot, that other lot mm. would have to be pretty sizable. It would have to be. Yeah. The nice thing about the fire station, it's kind of long to the street, but it's mm -hmm. not terribly deep. So mm -hmm. it looks bigger than it really is. There's actually quite a bit of space in the, behind it, as well as in front of it. Mm -hmm. So there's quite a few opportunities there. Okay. The conversation has to be maneuvering the bigger pieces of equipment into the base and making sure you leave that. But those are some things a designer will look into, our yes. bylaws and aquifer and all that. Okay. So, anyone? Fred? Hey, can you put that last one back on? See if touching the mouse mm -hmm. has the desired effect. <laughs> be nice to be there. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, behind the um, old, the little school. That's this property, right? The um, yeah. Where that wet, where that water is, up, not the lower one, but up above. The bigger pond? Yeah, very nice at one time. Really, mm -hmm. really nice for a, like, town park, because it was really nice in there. But it's been let go, you know, overgrowth and what have you. But it was really nice. I, I'm a woods guy. I thought it was really nice back there. Still, yeah, okay. I mean, this is kind of messy because it's a yeah. And if but you go, yeah. The pond is kind of pretty, like I said, it's pretty deep. It so is. Eight feet. It is very I nice. Don't know. Yeah. So we might, we might pick up some bass or something. It was probably, <laughs> no, I, it was probably <laughs> an old, old <laughs> mill pond. Yes. So what is this right here? That is the quote unquote little brown house. Okay, so we can use that. That's right. All right. So, I, I so was that could be expanded. You're going to get in there with the, but if you were to move that field, it makes all that available to get in there. Yeah. Okay. I mean, let's face it, a soccer field can be moved pretty easily. Yeah, yeah I was thinking, no, it, it's da well, dangerous is the right word, but it's cramped in there when there's a game going mm. on. Yes. There. So there's no way trucks would get in yeah. out of there. Yeah, right. But all that, possibly. Okay. Or could you, not ideal, but could you just move the parking for that and expand that area that way so they're not, you know, they come in and turn right, <coughs> and yet the highway department still goes straight. So there's not a lot of room there in that buffer off the back of that wetland. Okay. And there's a house there. So when you when you're at the soccer field, I think for you guys who have kids and grandkids or whatever, you look back to that corner of the soccer field, you can see that house. Oh, okay. Really the beautiful. one that's right like between the pond and that so it's in pond the and the field. Of that okay. Lot. But this also has a much larger bridge than what's there. Yeah. And bridges are expensive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is this yeah. crossing? I, it, so it's a, that would be probably a box cover and you know, some studies would have to be done to place it. Can you go to your second one? Very demanding. <laughs> Please. <laughs> uh, this 
this one? Yeah, I think so. So this is Buckeye, this is the existing. Oh, Buckeye, Buckeye is Buckeye the second, second one. one. Yeah. So just a concern I have with this one, the, the entrance pool. You said the only way in is here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's down here. If I, if the difference between this one and the first location, I'd be, these, that's a house and that's a house. Correct. So they're gonna have trucks going in and out of there. It seems like the existing location doesn't affect any homeowners or landowners. So if it came down between the two of them for me, I want to look up for there. Those homeowners interested in it. I don't want trucks going. It's narrow. It is narrow here. Because this is where the community garden was during COVID, so we, I spent some time back here. But this wetland here actually goes, it, it extends beyond that. It's really, this is wet. Oh, so you couldn't really build onto that to build a driveway into that anyway? Well, you could, but it would be more to do than just yeah. digging and paving it. You would have to get permission. Yeah. But it is a possibility. I think the difficulty here is the line of sight pulling trucks out. This is the hole. This is the bottom of the hill as you come down the street. Okay. And then we really don't want to disturb this area here. Uh, the Douglas Fire Department used to practice in that particular spot. With all kinds of practice stuff. <laughs> that we just assume. Don't want to disrupt. Disrupt. <laughs> Shit. This, this is a very substantial area. This is pretty high in there. So these are all pine trees and makes it look even higher. Now, what Bob Sullivan will tell you is that there's a fall hazard here as you come down this grade. So some of these pine trees are a bit too overgrown mm -hmm. and could block the road if they were to fall because they're old. Um, so some of this will have to go anyway. I'm just thinking of during a snow event, there'd be trucks going in and out of there with lights going all day and all night long. Mm-hmm. Anyone else? So as, as far as our team goes, this is the least desirable for a number of reasons. But it will still be looked at. Well, we should, well, I'd rather not give, I'd pay to have somebody do a, this one or that one, because I think we can do that, right? Mm. <laughs> they, may, they may find something that we're not aware of, and then if we don't have the third one on the list, we don't have a fallback. So I would almost, Three is the bare minimum that I would want to put in front of them, so I, yeah. I'm casting about trying to find other locations. There's difficulty. Maybe one of those homeowners would want to sell an extra driveway. We might do that. Yeah. Uh, Wasn't there also some discussion regarding the water department? They're, they put up money for this. Oh, oh okay. Along with the town. Well, they, this, so this, they yeah, are they this building right here. They're making active use of this building. Oh, okay. The, uh, but the reason to buy it was to protect the aquifer. And our your, landfill, your old landfill, which is an uncapped landfill, is right there. So, um, the town owns quite a bit of land in the Davis Street area. The difficulty with it is, is it's on one end of town. So it's, it, to, to reach everywhere, you know, it's a long trip back. So if you've got the plow route, you're doing Wallace. <laughs> you got to go back to Davis to pick up more sand and, and salt. It's kind of a hassle. Mm. So when we're centrally located as we are now, everybody's at the same distance back to the home base. Because um, <clears throat> the land out over that, that way towards Davis Street is actually pretty good. Uh, Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, you mentioned your, your team said this is their least desirable, which are most desirable. I think there's a difference of and your team, Scenario. you mean the... So Madam Chair, I, I, the team I put together here is John Ferno, Adam Ferno, Matt Benoit, okay. um, and myself, to try to refine the RFQ to the point where it's at least something that people could bid on. Uh, I... Oh, and Bob Sullivan. I, I got Bob Sullivan involved, because you can't have conversations about wellheads without having Bob in the room. We don't know where just seems to me the existing location, if it if there's enough room there, it's... So 
So I, between I the three. The words in John's mouth, Madam Chair, but I think that's what he prefers to. Just they know it, right? Could, can you go back to the other one? The highway. Basically, you know, yes, it's good to have input on sites, but basically what's going to happen at this point for this committee is that we make the choices of the, whoever comes forward. Pick the designer. And pick the design. Mm -hmm. but Un understood, but he had mentioned he was looking for input yeah. as far as. Yeah. No, it's yeah. good to get on the ground floor. Absolutely. Without yeah. the support of this committee. I mean, if they're able to procure that land, and the white there, I think that's a no-brainer. Yeah. I think that one's an easy one. Problem is if, is if that person doesn't want to separate from that or you can't get any more, then... And the blue line is a brook. So on this map, I think he used the blue line as the buffer. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, buffer from the uh, pond. Mm. <laughs> yeah, because you know what it's like? It's like you thought that was a chocolate chip cookie. Yeah. So probably yeah, a. So the blue line here is, is actually the, the setback from, or is that, that has a name. It says the 100% oh, right. buffer zone approximate, yeah. Yeah. That must be where Riddle Brook. Widens out. Which the is the headwaters to yeah. the town well. Yeah. So, huh. Which it already goes alongside of the capped yes. landfill, which has all, the word has always been it's not if it's going to fail. Yeah, yeah. When. Mm -hmm. Capped, but it's not lined. It's capped. It's close. It's capped. That's what I meant. Yeah. It's capped, but not completely, because the state was providing the funds, but they ran out of money, so we didn't get the complete cap. When was it closed? Oh, I don't. I can't tell you dates, but probably 90s. Yeah, probably. Yeah. And when was it actively used? When was the beginning of the year? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> don't, 1800? I, yeah, I don't know. A long time. So, <clears throat> because one of the conversations we stumbled upon with the land over on Gilboa Street, where you see the warehouse going up now, some of those parcels on the Douglas Uxbridge line had been set aside for a town dump. And that was done by the Halls in the 1920s. So it's possible that when that did not become the town dump, that this did become the town dump. Hmm. Could be. I have the dubious distinction of having been the town administrator in the municipality that had the last fully functioning municipal landfill. Oh boy. <laughs> and they just finished, their, they're capping it now. So the guy after me is the one who's responsible for that total poop show. <laughs> but, <laughs> It's uncanny why they always put these things next to a stream. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, what were you guys thinking? Unbelievable. <laughs> well, look what we throw in the ocean. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and it keeps, but we're not we drinking old, it, but. This, this old, right, so you know, with the old S.O. cans and everything. Yep. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Everything. Yeah, so, so I have a. We don't really want to. to Linda has one more there. question. So this parcel owner. Oh. Uh, and uh, what does Highway think if this land going to support them for the next 50 years? Because it is a lot smaller than the other two, even with the other wetlands on the other two sites. This is like a quarter of the size. Yeah. I think in a, and so the, the lot surrounded by a white boundary is uh, the landowner is Buxton. The orange bounded lot is owned by Tebow. The small businessman who builds uh, water features in people's backyards okay. and around their pools and whatnot. So a lot of what you see up, up there is like piles of rocks and mm -hmm. he's got some skid steers and a couple of trucks and a little building. I think if you were able to put those, both of those together with the yellow, which is what we own now, while you can't use a lot of the orange lot, it gives you that second, you would basically have almost three driveways mm. in place. <clears throat> but you would 
So if you look at the size of this building, right, you say that's probably the only size the salt barn we still need. This is adequate for what we do. When you moved it up, or we're able to move it over here and free all this space up for the type of Steel, steel building that we'll be talking about. This mm -hmm. type of function. We've got to figure it's got to be at least the size of the fire department. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you slide the fire department over, it's that's still significantly bigger than what's on the highway department now. Well, this is a good reference point here. This yeah, that's yeah. yeah. So take that and mentally, how would you set it up here and still have this and this and a part of this somewhere else? Yeah, yeah you almost can't. It'd be close. It'd be tight. Yeah, that's what I'm looking to see for growth. I mean, we might, I mean, we're a growing sewer, town. Just so that you didn't have to mess with, because each one of those lots probably has a septic system on it, so you can eliminate all three. In 20 years, he may need double the equipment he's using now with all the subdivisions. We've got no shot at Ray's because Ray still wants to do his big project. Does he? So. <laughs> hmm. That would be ideal in a way. Oh, yeah. But, Okay. For his purposes, that's much better than that. So there's no, can't be any conversation about swapping or anything. All right. Well, one more quick question. Yes. So you're in communication with those landowners. John's right. reaching out to them. Uh, because they're neighbors over there, there's lots of informal conversations that have occurred in the past mm -hmm. that are the oh. basis for, you know, ongoing conversation. Over the fence. Yeah. <laughs> Those conversations have a way of changing when, yeah. when the project gets real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's fair, right? Everybody yeah, yeah. has that fair shot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just so we can move ahead, Matt, sure. when do you feel you ha will have the information ready to so go? So your next meeting is December 21st? Yes. I want to have the RFQ fully drafted in front of you at that meeting. Okay. Excellent. Okay. And hopefully everybody will be able to make that meeting. I know it's holiday time, but the intent, I think, of the selectmen, too, were, was to get things moving so they could present at town meeting, which is in, in May. May. And yeah. before you know it, May, May is here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other questions? All right. So if... There are no other questions. We'll um, look forward to the December 21st meeting to go move forward. Um, could you just give us a touch of, you know, as we go along, where we are with some of the, th the things that are just hanging over us, like the status of the oil spill? No change there. Okay. Uh, Green communities, you should have gotten an update from Matt Benoit. I did, yeah. Municipal center backup generator, Just standby still generator. Still waiting for the generator? The generator's on order, that's gonna take a while to get. So there have been a really big plan sets that have been going back and forth between Fall, Fall River Electric, which is a su successful bidder, excuse me, mm -hmm. uh, and the engineer. So the engineer rejected the first copy, but it wasn't a big deal, it was just minor edits. Those were responded to, and I think we have a final plan set. Okay. Um, we're gonna wait till the spring at this point to start digging out there. The Bad Luck Pond Outlet Bridge, most of us call that the Cedar Street Bridge. Mm -hmm. um, we have one sign to move that's an inch too high out of the ground, and we'll be done with this <laughs> oh my God. silly thing. The, the, so, uh, CONCOM signed off on the Compliance with the plantings, okay. the restoration. There's an ongoing back and forth between the paving contractor and the general contractor that you needn't lose any sleep over. Uh, it's like a law school question. It's fascinating. We've received a direct demand, a direct payment demand from the sub, uh, <clears throat> which we may not have to honor because the sub hasn't proven that they complied with minimum wage. So. This is back and forth. But in terms of being able to close it out as a physical project, it's done. Uh, nothing on so E that's in hold. Well, we'll wait till the next meeting to say off the list, okay? Yeah. Okay. And of the other things, Madam Chair, mm -hmm. there's no motion except on F. 
uh, the riggers are finally out on the towers installing our microwave. Uh, they pulled wire at the fire station this week and last week. And they have also been here working on the console downstairs. Um, oh God. So a lot of the equipment was assembled and tested at their warehouse at their facility. So they wanted to be ready so that once their system, the main backbone is hooked up, they wouldn't have to do all the smaller stuff. Um, I have, if I find it, oh, terrifying. Oh, um, bear with me for one second, because mm -hmm. I think a quick search, and I will find the product project manager's last update. So this is last week. So these things have come true. So what, what I'm about to read to you has happened. We are still on schedule for tower work that should have started Monday. So they've been up there at least two days before the weather soured at both the monopole and the industrial communication site. We received a notice to proceed from American Tower. So industrial has permission to work there all week. Coordination for electrical work at both the monopole and industrial sites will begin Monday as well. So that industrial already has its, they, they both already have their generators, but we need additional electrical feeds for the equipment that we're, we're installing. This week we were also able to successfully install the microwave on the wooden pole behind the fire department, pull the necessary cabling from the pole to the data closet at the firehouse. All other milestones for the project are on track. So, um, <clears throat> That's where we are with that. There's been some last minute scurrying about what we're gonna do with some of the equipment that's on the tower that's associated with our existing UHF system. The whole point of this project is to get rid of that UHF system. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I, I hope my last email to everyone was clear. We're not trying to save the UHF system as our redundancy it is not what we need. If they want to keep their mobile repeaters in their cars for interoperability with neighboring towns that are still using UHF, that's fine. If we're going to have it on our portables, that's fine too. It's sort of an extra layer of redundancy. But in terms of true redundancy, anything that takes out our VHF system would also take out the UHF, right? The, the tornado is not going to take out one antenna, not the mm -hmm. other. So <clears throat> that's not a, a viable option. To me, it's a combination of low band. So we. We still have these, you know, elephants communicate with mm -hmm. really low rumbling noises and it goes for miles. That's how what low band radio does. The waves are really long and they go through everything. They penetrate forests, they penetrate leaves and buildings. It's just that you can't go out and buy a new low band system anymore. They're no longer being made that section of the spectrum is being used for other things and so they're not encouraging use of low band. But we have low band frequency and we have a radio system that works. So that will be our redundancy. That and the things that we can now do with these, um, <clears throat> we are already hooked up to an app on our phones which is push to talk over the cellular network for public safety. So that, um, that's also available to us. So that's where we are on public safety radio. I'm, I'm hopeful that, you know, it's taken a couple of months of testing. They're gonna go all over town under different weather conditions and different times of day and all the mm -hmm. things they need to do. The reason why we picked this firm was that their quality control at the end of the project was really robust. They had really thought about how to make sure our system would work for us. Mm -hmm. And so I'm anxious for that part of it because we'll be able to see what kind of work they're doing. Okay, questions, anybody on that? Is there a projected end date for that? Yeah, we really want this done in December. Yeah, the biggest part of it was getting I, those microwave dishes up mm -hmm. and aligning them. Because it is already behind schedule. Yeah, it's way behind schedule. Yeah, because um, this came before capital. Yeah, so I, uh, I've had to use words I don't like to use as a pro procurement official. I've had to use words like default and 
but we finally got everybody to the table and I think they heard us loud and clear at the last meeting. So we right. just can't do this anymore. All right, we'll keep that on and yep. find out, hopefully. I'd love to be at December 21st, you know. Yes. <laughs> what, did, what did they say? What hath God wrought? Is that the first <laughs> telegraph? Isn't that what that was? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Municipal roof, you'll be having the uh, procurement or... I actually am hoping that the same house doctor I get for the bigger things would be the house doctor for my roof project. Um, okay. I still we'll I want to procure that over the winter for spring. Yes. Yeah. Heat pumps for the fire station. That project is underway with McRitchie. Yep. Uh, so the mechanical engineer was out here looking at the building, getting specs and measurements a uh, week and a half, two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then McRitchie is already with the fire station upgrades, generator electrical? Yes. Yeah. And So we put all that together now into one. Okay. So the additional fee was $8,000. It was well worth it to have the mechanicals built into the electrical design. Okay. Upper, nothing. That was just information basically for the board, for the committee. Yes. Right. Any uh, questions on that? Okay. All right. Minutes of September 21st, 2022. I just had one correction on E on the second page. Ah, it says the energy efficiency projects were completed. So it should be at the fire department, not as the fire department. I had that too. Yeah, technical. That's all I had. Yeah, a little technical thing. Yeah. Anything else? Anyone? I make a motion to approve the September 21st, 2022 meeting minutes as amended. Second. Seconded by, uh, yeah. Motion by Linda, seconded by Bob. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. And then October 5th. Um, I do want to mention that, um, Bob Wormy, you were excused because you did let me know that you weren't going to be able to make it. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, yeah, where it says, um, you know, who's present. Yep. 407, Shirley Mazinski would like to welcome Ray joining tonight remotely. Doesn't say who Ray is. You could put new member. True because up at the top it just says attendance, doesn't say that, yeah. you know, who the members are. Um, actually, he represent, he's the representative or appointee from the school committee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he's the new member. Yes. So I and would like to add new yeah. member. And appointee from the school committee. Okay. Okay. Anything else? I do have one um, in the first, number one. About three quarters of the way down, Mr. Wojcik stated that he didn't want to go, it should be on record. It just says go record. Yeah, <laughs> correct. I think that, oh, and then um, on the second page of that, under J. Um, Again, Mr. Wojcik asked him what the additional cost would be for him to do the design work for the electrical and mechanical at the same time, mm -hmm. not as. Yep. Anyone else? If not, do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. As, as amended. amended. Mm -hmm. Motion made by Linda. Seconded by? Second. Fred? <laughs> All right, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, don't forget, December 21st is our next meeting.
which is, you know, if you are unable to attend, please let me know, or Jen. And then the uh, January meeting is January 18th, 2023. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Any other topics not anticipated in the past 20, 48 hours? Uh, if not, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Motion made by Bob Wormy and seconded by Fred to adjourn at what five o'clock. Five. 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 All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted.